Okay, hey everyone. So um, today I felt like doing something, you know, pretty unique. Um, so I haven't uploaded like a single video in like two months. So I felt like I should upload at least something to like <laughs> fill in the gap. But um, so yeah, I've um, I've decided to do something I haven't seen before, which is upload my top five best rated victories and my top five worst rated defeats. And just sort of analyze the games and you know see what I did wrong in the in the defeats and what I did well in the victories so hopefully we can uh, we can all learn something like you know from my worst rated defeats and best rated victories like I feel like there's definitely something to learn so um yeah so we're gonna start off with the defeat number five and then move on to defeat number four, three, two, one, and then the victories. Um, so yeah, let's let's get going with this game. So um, this was a one plus zero game, but I berserked, so I only had thirty seconds. Um, yeah, so normally I shouldn't really have any troubles like against the sixteen hundred if I berserk in atomic in one plus zero because thirty seconds is more than enough. Um, like to beat someone at least like 300 to 400 points lower than you uh, and especially 800 so um but didn't quite work out for me this game so he plays e3 and um in this position i play knight of six so knight of six is a sort of system of mine that i really like um it's not the best obviously as you can see it's a blunder the engine says it's a blunder and well it is a blunder um so here, you know, one e six is the is the best move, and there there's a couple lines here. Queen of three and knight, knight of three being the best. Um, but okay, I I play knight f six because usually it confuses people, and uh, a lot of people aren't really that booked up. So you can get some quite interesting positions with some material imbalance. Um, that I that I like playing. So he goes queen f three is is pretty much the only good move here. Um, and it's the move you should play. Um, and now black plays c6, which probably you know, might seem a bit strange at first sight, but basically the idea is that um, you want to get your queen out um, to one of these squares, actually, with tempo. Because the thing is, white's plan here is to play either bishop d3 or knight h3. So the reason behind those two moves is, so let's say black plays, in this position actually, let's play, so let's say black plays e6. This is a fatal blunder, because now white plays knight h3. And, you know, we're threatening to, to, to you know, just jump in here, and, uh, yeah, like, the, on, the only way black can stop it is to play g5 here. Because if h6, then, you know, knight g5 comes anyway, and... This is made. Um, so let's say g5, but then just um, actually here, I think white has bishop d3. Um, well, maybe not actually. Yeah, never mind, there's bishop b4 then. But um, even just knight takes g5, and um, and this just, you know, white wins a pawn for nothing. Um, there's probably better, but. Honestly, e6 is, is a really bad move. Um, we can turn on the engine here. It's, yeah, it's plus 5. It's just really bad. So c6 here is the, is the best move. On, um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the idea behind bishop d3 is that um, white wants to play bishop d6 uh, with force mate. Um, but yeah, black can you know defend with bishop b4 and then c3 and you can get rid of this bishop. But, um, yeah, so after c6, the, um, I think the best move is knight c3. And then there are, there are a couple lines, like queen a5, bishop a6, uh, king d8. I've had this a couple times. Um, and yeah, there are some, like, some variations like this, where it comes to some queen imbalance stuff. Um, oh, sorry, in this position, knight, knight d4, obviously. And then it's some, you know, imbalance. Um, 
So yeah, I like to play this actually, because you know it confuses my lower rate opponent, and and it's easier to play with the queen when you have like less time, because you can make some you can make some dirty threats, like when the opponent has has not a lot of time to think, especially when they're lower rated, they might miss it. Um, but yeah, I definitely do not recommend playing one at you know this this move order um, unless you're like. At least 2200 because it is really hard to play but um he plays queen of three and then i play c6 um and here he plays queen of five so queen of five not the best move uh, actually a blunder obviously and now the balance shifts in black's favor um because this queen of five move is just a waste um like you can't play knight of three here but then black has, you know, queen a5, and then um, if b4, then the move king d8, once again, is um, is really nice. Idea is threatening this and stopping knight e5, um, you know, from being a mate threat, because it would fork these two pawns. So, um, yeah, but in this position, he plays queen a5, which is, you know, a bit weird. I don't really see the point, because uh, black just plays pawn to b6 and once again this queen has to move again and black gets some really nice pawns up here as like fortress like a barricade uh so in this position uh, my opponent plays f4 which is you know it's it's really bad because i just you know it hangs a queen basically i mean it's just losing um so he plays d4 and d4 this i mean this is just winning like there's nothing white can do really um, here he tries for some weird stuff, but you know I can just take. Um, I don't mind losing a pawn I'm, when I'm up a queen. So h4, bishop b6. Here I was just mindlessly moving, I think, because you know I'm up a queen. Um, he plays g4 for some reason, and then bishop takes f4, and then bishop c4 just castles. Oh, sorry. Um, rook f8. I should have castled probably, but yeah, I, mean, I don't think it matters that much. So rook f8 and my rook just comes in now. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, he plays e4 and then rook f1, king e2, rook f2, king e1. And now comes the moment where I go wrong. So I play queen a5, c3, and then here I remember I was thinking about some way to mate, but I couldn't actually calculate anything. So I was like, okay, then I just take all his pawns. Oh, sorry, all his material. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, with under 10 seconds left on one card. I should have seen it, obviously, but, you know, I, I just missed this simple move. And the rook just comes in, there's nothing black can do, really. Like, queen f5 probably is the best, but, you know, it doesn't matter, because he just takes it. Um, so I, I, you know, I played this, and I got made it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, really, really bad game on my behalf, of course. Um, but okay, so moving on to game number two. In this game, I was actually a white, which makes it even more embarrassing. So I play knight of three, knight four, and um, this is an opening I'd really like, with um, usually with e3 or knight f5, really. Um, also, I play h3 sometimes, but not that often. Um, I just like this this line. Uh, but my opponent plays a typical, you know, lower rated mistake, opening mistake. He plays c6 here. Which is a blunder, and now White's completely winning already after Knight of Five, which forks you know the E seven, which would be made, and the G seven, which would win all his pawns. So he plays E six, and now I play E four, which is a really nice. You know, I usually play this; it's just tricky. Um, because idea is you know if the lower rated player is unsuspecting and they take this, then now White has Queen H five, G six, and Queen Queen H three. And just mating because um, there's nothing black can do. Like here, takes um, you know threatening mate, king f7, just this is mate. Um, so that's a nice, it's a nice theme actually to keep in mind. It happens a lot of times when there's like this open diagonal down here, and the queen can swing in like this with a pawn preventing f5. Uh, but yeah, he actually he played queen f5 um, and then just c3. Um, yeah, of course, of course, this move isn't the best e4 because there is actually queen f5, queen a5, c3, and now he can take this. 
And of course, white is still pretty much winning after this, but um, yeah, it's not as good as if white has just taken this. So um, queen a5, c3, queen c5, d4. Um, and queen c5 is just, it's just bad. Obviously, it, hit, it has a pawn, but I can just defend with d4 with a free move. And now he, he goes back, and then now I take this. So, yeah, obviously, this is completely winning. So, he plays queen h5. I just take it, you know, just to be sure. Um, so, b6, g4, I want to push just push the pawn down, get that open g line, and then just checkmate him. But the problem is here, I pre move g5, which Pre-moving is always really dangerous in Atomic, and um, we should always be very be aware of stuff like this. Um, he plays bishop a6, and I pre-move g5, and, you know, I get mated. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate game there, but, um, okay, moving on. Yeah, so obviously just the lesson to learn from that game is don't pre-move, like, um, at least don't pre-move, like, in a position like this, where, you know, it's open and bishop a6 is an obvious move. I should have obviously I shouldn't see that. I should have pre-moved maybe bishop b3 or c4. But um, yeah, I wasn't smart enough, especially with low time. You can sometimes get you know pre-move trapped. So moving on to the next game. Uh, in this game, I really don't have any excuse. I mean, I <laughs> uh, it was a three plus zero game, so I actually started the game with 1.5 minutes, uh, meaning I should. Obviously, I won this. Like, one minute and thirty seconds is more than enough. So knight f three f six knight d four c six. Once again, the same you know the same stuff. He plays e five actually. Uh, so I play e four anyway. Um, because I'm threatening this mate, which is actually a theme. So let's say a five, queen h five g six, and now knight g six. So takes queen h six. Actually, is mating. But like, he he saw that I guess he plays d five. Um, well he didn't actually see that fully but you know um so i play queen h5 which is um an inaccuracy i think actually uh because g6 knight g7 takes queen h6 um i thought this was just mating um but he actually has queen b6 which is really nice this is sort of counter threat so um you know an explosion obviously comes before check so check mate um, would be bad. So I decided in this position that I will play king d1. After thinking for 12 seconds, I play king d1, which was really stupid. Of, uh, yeah, because uh, I simply just missed this move. Uh, was bishop d4, I just missed it because f3 now is the only move. Bishop b2, he takes it. King e1, obviously takes on f2, so f3. But now he has a really nice move, which is queen f2, just coming in here. And you know, there's nothing I can do. He just made. So, um, yeah, that, a really nice tactic by my, by my opponent there, but, um, actually I had a move here, which was d4, which I, I really, I don't know how I missed this, but, um, yeah, d4 actually just defends, because takes, and, uh, now I can play bishop b3, and, you know, if you move your queen, I play b4, and if you, if you take this, then I can play queen e3, just retreating, giving a check, and, you know, takes, um, just knight c3, and I'm up a rook. So um, so yeah, I, I have no idea how I missed that, but um, especially thinking for 12 seconds, like with one and a half minute, it's not it's not like it was like a 30 second game. This was like a 90 second game, which is um, more than enough to spot d4. But um, but okay, I mean, I think I was just you know I just missed bishop g4. So more of the story is just you know, you should always look out for your opponent's, like, resources in Atomic. There's a lot of, there's a lot of games like this, where, you know, one side has an unstoppable mate, but then the other side comes in with an unstoppable mate that has priority because of the explosion rule. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the next game. I think I remember this game, and it was really, um, painful. Um, this guy, Requeen, I don't, I don't know him, but, you know. So this is another 1 minute and 30 second game. So e4, d5, I never played this. Like, I, I don't know why I played this this game. I I have no clue. I never played this. But sometimes I'll play it against like 1200s because sometimes they take this. And then there's, this is a maiden, obviously. 
So, um, yeah, but this guy is smarter than that. He plays 2d3, which is a bad move. The best move here is probably to play d4. Um, but yeah, d5, once again, it's a bad move. The best move here is to play e6. So one, one you know, common theme you can see with most of my losses is that I play some bullshit opening. Like a really bad opening. Um, which, you know, sometimes it works out, but, you know, usually it's a bad idea. Um, so d5 isn't that bad, but it's, it's not good. So um, he plays d3. Um, and now I'll play knight f6. Because I wasn't really thinking, like this game, I was just thinking... Make some cheap mid threads and it will probably fall, which is a really bad idea. You know, over, you know, sorry, um, underestimating your opponent is a is a really bad idea. You know, not only an atomic, basically in any chess variant. So um, he plays bishop g five and now e four. So now he plays d four and I completely blunder mate with d takes e five without thinking. Um, yeah, I, as you can see, I thought for thirty seconds, but actually in this game, um, I remember because I was um I was out. Uh, grabbing a drink as of thirsty and I come back and I see d4 and I go what so I just take this and then I spot he has bishop c4 <laughs> and I was like oh because <laughs> it's just mating um, like there's nothing I can do um, yeah so I ended up playing bishop b6 but now he has bishop takes f6 and it's undefendable really because takes would mean queen takes d8 um, so I ended up playing f6, but now he has check here, and really nice move is queen g4. And it's just winning. He comes in here, if I play f5, he has this. So, um, yeah, nice game by him, actually. Um, but, yeah, really bad, really bad play by me. So moving on to my worst rated defeat. This is my worst, worst rated defeat of all time. And it's really embarrassing. So, um, he plays 1f and yeah i remember this game i was like what so i played <laughs> one and f6 because i was like I, I like nobody has ever played this against me so i just played knight f6 and um he plays knight h3 and i was like what um so without actually thinking like again i i underestimated my opponent and i thought you know it's a random move so i thought just okay you know I play knight g4 and I even thought for 12 seconds for some reason and I didn't see that he just has knight g5. Um, you know, there's nothing I can do here because the funny thing is if I play f6, he has knight f7. Once again, you know, explosion comes before anything. So, um, you know, we could have gotten this <laughs> funny position where this is just mate. But, um, okay, I just play knight f2, hoping he had, you know, I, I don't know why I was hoping, but he just takes... And uh, that's a GG. And I was 2400 even. Like, <laughs> yeah, so really bad tilt for me. Um, as you can see, this, this game in the middle of the tournament. Um, but okay, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, this was, you know, the first episode. I'll do my five best rated wins um, next you know, sort of next video, because um, this video is getting long, and I don't want to upload, like, a too long video, so I'll split it up in two parts, and you can go watch the second part, which I guess I'll just film now, but I think there's a lot more to talk about in my best rated victories, because those games are a lot more interesting, so, um, so yeah, thanks for watching, I guess, uh, if you liked it, then like the video, maybe, and uh, if you really left it, then maybe subscribe, um we're almost at 100 subscribers so that would be awesome um so anyway yeah thanks for watching and um yeah i'll see you in the next video so um bye